Hey, Weeaboo, you have to get out of your room and get a job. Oh. Oh. And now you're going to say, Mercy, I'll never make you leave your room again. Mercy, I'll never make you leave your room again. Wait, Nani? <laughs> Too late. Welcome back to another JoJo's Bizarre Adventure Strength and Power tier list. This list will be ranking the characters of Part 2, Battle Tendency, in terms of how strong they are in battle. At the bottom of the list in the human tier is Smokey. Smokey has survived living on the streets of New York City, pickpocketing unsuspecting pedestrians. But in terms of physical strength, he's pretty weak, and he was easily manhandled by the corrupt cops, who go above him for this reason. The gangster Jojo beat up seemed bigger and tougher than the cops and had brass knuckles, so unless they draw their guns, those cops would probably get pummeled. Speedwagon didn't do any fighting in part two, but if you include his feats from part one, this is probably where he would land. Joseph Joestar at the age of 13 was able to use Hamon without any training and could use it to knock people out. He also managed to somehow survive a plane crash, helping Speedwagon and the pilot survive as well. His father, George Joestar, doesn't really have any feats, but like his father and son, he's a mountain of a man, and he was also a trained soldier. This should put him at peak human tier. Donovan was a German SS commando who managed to stab Joseph in a surprise attack and basically used a substitution jutsu with a cactus, causing Joseph to hurt his hand, and quickly followed up with a knee to the face, downing him. This was a Joseph who could already tangle with vampires, so Donovan is easily peak human tier and one of the deadliest regular humans in the JoJo franchise. Leaving humanity behind, we're moving up to the zombie tier. At the bottom of the zombie tier is the only actual zombie. It's the zombie that survived the events of part one and secretly hid its identity, biding its time, even becoming a commander in the Royal Army Corps. This is where it came into contact with George Joestar, and it ended up killing him due to George's lack of hormone training. The vampire prisoner was a legit vampire created by the mask, so he would likely be above most zombies, which are just spawn of vampires. However, noob vampires aren't really that much better, and prior to being turned, this vampire was a feeble old man. So as far as vampires go, he's probably about as weak as you can get. The vampire soldiers that worked under the Pillar Men were equipped with weapons and armor, and were said to be chosen, so I would assume they would be better fighters than some naked old prisoner transformed into a vampire for an experiment. The vampire horses have the strength of 150 normal horses and can cross 960 meters in one minute. They can crush the vampire soldiers underfoot, and even Wamu struggles to control them. Straight so before becoming a vampire was a Hamon master and easily killed four people and nearly killed Speedwagon. He was the successor to Tan Petty as the leader of the Hamon order, and was the adoptive father and teacher of Lisa Lisa, so it could be argued he should be much higher. But the only way I see that being the case is if he actually got weaker from turning into a vampire. That is possible considering he had a lifetime of training in Hamon, and he could no longer use it once transforming without killing himself. But there's nothing that really implies that to be the case. And if anything, the narrative suggests that he's more powerful after turning into a vampire. I think this spot is also where he would go during the events of part one. The vampire tier is next, and at the bottom is the vampire wired Beck. <laughs> this weirdo seemingly somehow fused with a door, and he can turn his body hair into spikes. He almost took Joseph's face off with a surprise attack, with Jojo only being saved by his weapon blocking the strike. Straitso after becoming a vampire has the ability to use the Space Ripper Stingy Eyes, which is arguably a vampire's deadliest weapon. He has mastery level knowledge on Hamon and has a special scarf that can conduct and disperse it if he's hit, making him harder to deal with using Hamon than most vampires. If you try to use conventional weapons on him, his skin is strong enough to dent bullets, and the ones that do go through, he can scrape or eject out of his body. If his body gets blown apart, he can regenerate. His fingertip pressure is 235 kilograms per centimeter squared, and he can jump 4.22 meters into the air. You could argue Wired Beck should be above Straitso because his speed surprised the post-Hamon training Jojo, but Beck is kind of an idiot, 
and the Space Ripper's stingy eyes are just too powerful of an ability. Joseph Joestar at the beginning of Part 2 hadn't received any formal Hamon training yet, but he was a prodigy who still managed to use it for things like blowing a police officer's finger off with a bottle cap. He was also strong enough to punch a cop's hand through his face. He isn't just brawn, he's brain as well. He's one of the smartest characters in the entire franchise, at least in a combat sense. He's extremely observant, to the point he knew which pocket a gangster had his brass knuckles in, even when the gangster himself didn't know. And he can even predict what his enemies are going to say before they say it. He's crafty and unpredictable, to the point he can pull a Tommy gun out of nowhere and cover his straight set with grenades before he even realizes it. If Hamon or weapons don't work, he always has a special ace up his sleeve. He was able to defeat Straitso, but it took everything he had to win. And Straitso was low on stamina after regenerating from the grenades. So you could argue Straitso would be stronger in a fair fight at peak condition. Though Straitso himself was arguably saved early in the fight due to his Hamon scarf. So I don't think it's fair to say Straitso is stronger because Jojo had to use equipment to win, when Straitso also had to use equipment. Caesar Zeppeli, when he was first introduced, was more skilled with Hamon than Joseph due to his previous training with Lisa Lisa. He gave a girl Hamon with a kiss, and she became strong enough to overpower and choke Jojo. His ultimate move is his Hamon Bubble Launcher, which he used to blow away and trap Jojo. Joseph still managed to take him down with a surprise mouth pigeon, so while Caesar has the edge, Jojo can still keep up with him. They were both able to damage Wamo a bit as well, Caesar with his Bubble Launcher, and Jojo with his Clackers. Dio from Part 1 would also likely be in this tier. I would put him at the top, as his freezing ability counters Hamon strikes, so Joseph likely wouldn't have been able to defeat him like he did with Straitso. Caesar's bubble launcher or Joseph's clackers might be able to take him out, so at the lowest I would put him right above Straitso. Moving up to the low Pillar Man tier, at the bottom are Machina and Loggins. They were significantly better Hamon users than Joseph and Caesar before their training with them started. And defeating those two was Joseph's and Caesar's final test. Machina was able to clash with post-training Caesar's bubble launcher, and he stated if the fight kept going, one or both of them would die, though he admitted that it would be him that would lose. Both of these two are easily taken out by ACDC and Wamu, who Joseph and Caesar after their training can contend with, so they clearly aren't in the same tier as any of them at that point. I think they should definitely be a tier above them before their training, as Caesar admitted he couldn't even begin to do something that they could. Santana is the first Pillar Man we are introduced to, and he has a whole host of crazy powers. He has super hearing and incredible intelligence, which allow him to quickly learn new languages and fully understand how to take a gun apart. He can dislocate and fracture his own bones to contort himself into extremely unnatural ways, which he can use to shove his body into a 4x20cm vent. His body is like rubber, making it hard to pierce, and he can contort it to dodge attacks. Santana can allow people to enter into his body where his cells then digest them, or he can enter them and control them from the inside. While inside someone else's body, after it got shot up, he was able to shoot the bullets back out of his fingers with enough force to kill. He can shove his ribs 132 centimeters out of his body with a max pressure of 825 kilograms per centimeter squared. If that doesn't work, he can use pieces of his flesh to drain his enemies. His skin is like an electrical ground to Hamon, similar to Straito's scarf, and Joseph when fighting him wasn't strong enough to penetrate it. Jojo was only able to damage Santana when he was brought inside of him, and Jojo was able to use Hamon from within to cut him in half. Maybe Machina or Loggins have Hamon strong enough to break through Santana's skin, but since there's no proof they can, I kept them below the Pillar Man. Despite all of these powers, Cars called him an immature child and pathetic guard dog and said he was nothing compared to him, Wamu, or ACDC, so Santana should go a tier below them. Rudolf von Stroheim, after being blown to smithereens trying to take Santana out with himself, was repaired and upgraded with something arguably even greater than Hamon. German science! His arms were made to surpass Santana, with a finger-crushing power of 1,950 kilograms per centimeter squared, which is approximately twice that of Santana's strength and his arms can contort in unnatural ways, allowing him to land surprise attacks. His metallic hand was also durable enough to block Kars' blade while it wasn't in chainsaw mode. This hand could also be shot out with enough force to pierce ultimate Kars. He has a gun in his chest that can fire 600 rounds that can pierce 30mm iron plating per minute. 
If that wasn't enough, he also has an ultraviolet ray blast that he can shoot from his eye that pierced through cars. And later got ultraviolet lights attached to his back that could turn groups of vampires to ash. As crazy as it might sound, Stroheim unironically beats Part 1 Dio. We climb higher now into the High Pillarman tier. Caesar, after being fully trained in Hamon, managed to give Wamu a good fight, even bringing him to his knees, and Wamu himself saying that it was close. Lisa, Lisa, and Jojo also confirmed that Caesar did significant damage to Wamu, if that wasn't clear enough from the fight itself. Wamu said Caesar would have lost the cars as well, so the only person in this tier I think Caesar could arguably be above is ACDC. In respect to our boy Caesar, let's all say his name together now. The three main Pillar Man are next, with the weakest one being ACDC. <laughs> ACDC has all of the powers of Santana, as well as the power to raise his blood temperature to 500 degrees Celsius, which he can use to boil his opponents alive by sending out and injecting his blood vessels into them. He was strong enough to easily kill Loggins, and devoured countless Hamon users 2,000 years ago. A post-training, Joseph was able to get the better of him, but ACDC managed to survive by evacuating his brain from the rest of his body. Even as just a brain, he's still a threat, and can take over the bodies of others, and still has his boiling blood. Kars was the smartest of the Pillar Men, and was the group's leader. He has bone blades that sprout from his limbs and he can make them even more deadly by rotating mini blades around the edge like a chainsaw. He can chop up pretty much anything with these, including cars, speeding bullets, and the mechanized Stroheim. Joseph at one point said he can't block them even if he concentrates all of his Hamon into one point, and that they would instantly chop him in two. He also said he couldn't think of a way to get around the blades, and this was after Joseph defeated ACDC, so this directly scales cars above his fellow Pillar Man. Wamu was stated to be a fighting genius, and unconsciously attacked Cars just because he stepped onto his shadow. He gave Joseph a harder time than ACDC did, so I think he deserves to go above him. Him being above Cars is more questionable. Wamu said Cars would have more trouble with Caesar than he did, but that was specifically due to a tight matchup. Joseph said Wamu seems stronger than Cars, but that doesn't outright confirm it either. However, Wamu has more showings, and his abilities seem better in general as his wind abilities have greater range and are more destructive than both Cars' and ACDC's. Wamu's Divine Sandstorm can rip through marble pillars like cloth, and this is the move that killed Caesar. He has an even more powerful move, the Atmospheric Rift, which shoots air out at extremely high pressure through a razor-thin opening and slices through stone like butter. He can use the vapor from his lungs to refract light, which makes him invisible while simultaneously allowing him to go out in the daylight. In the anime, it seems Cars has a similar ability, though this isn't shown off in the manga. Wamu doesn't need his eyes, as he can see things through sensing the wind. And he also has an anti hamon weapon, two more things that put him above the other Pillar Men. One major argument I can think of for Cars and ACDC being above Wamu is that it's directly stated that Wamu respects the strong, and he highly respects and even follows Cars and ACDC. So this could be an indication that they're stronger. However, they raised him, and Cars is the smartest of them so those factors could highly play into his respect. Another argument for Cars beating Wamu is that Wamu is a proud warrior who fights fairly, while Cars will use any method to win. So if Cars pulls some trick, I think he has a good chance of winning. But when it comes to pure combat power, Wamu has the most evidence for being the strongest of the Pillar Men. He also launched his own freaking head with a crossbow, so that gives him some bonus points. Joseph Joestar, after training with Lisa Lisa, was able to defeat ACDC and then later defeated Wamu in a chariot battle. When he first encountered Cars in Switzerland, Joseph admitted that he couldn't think of a way to get around Cars' blade, so at that point he would go below him. But after his fight with Wamu, even while drained of energy, he managed to get the better of Cars with the last of his Hamon, cutting his bone blade right off his arm. Joseph might not be as physically powerful as the Pillar Men, as he can't survive a 2-300 meter fall, while Cars easily can. <laughs> and he failed to pull back the string of a crossbow, while Wamu can clothesline a stone pillar apart and use it as a baseball bat. But his quick thinking in a fight vastly outshines theirs, and he's gotten the better of all three of them, so he rightfully goes above all three of them. And if things aren't going his way, he can always... 
His mother and master, Lisa Lisa, goes at the top of this tier, as Joseph has admitted inferiority to her on multiple occasions. She could hear breaths from vampires that Jojo couldn't, and Wama was impressed by her decisiveness and insightfulness. She treats vampires like Wired Becca's fodder, and literally pulled an Omaiwa Mo Shinderu on him. One line from Jojo could be used to argue him above her, as he says he wanted to face cars himself as Lisa Lisa's a woman, but after that he reaffirms Lisa Lisa's better than him. So this would mean he probably didn't think she was weaker than him because she was a woman, but rather he just didn't want a woman to have to fight in general if she didn't have to. You could also argue that she's only above him in Hamon, and that Jojo with all of his weapons, tricks, and fighting intelligence could actually pull a victory. But I don't think there's a way to actually measure that. So I think Lisa Lisa deserves her spot at the top of this tier. At the peak of the tier list and evolution itself is the ultimate being Cars, after he was empowered by the mask with the redstone of Asia. His IQ? 400. Grip strength? 900 kilometers per centimeter squared. Max jump height? 18 meters. Sight as good as a space telescope. Super hearing. And much, much more. As the ultimate being, he's invincible, will never grow old, and will never die. He has the abilities of all life forms on the planet and surpasses them. For example, he can grow antennas that can detect heat and air movements, wings that allow him to fly, launchable metal piercing armadillo shells that deflect bullets, and a crab shell he modified with air bubbles to allow himself to survive in lava that's over 1000 degrees celsius. His body parts can even change into full-on animals, such as his hand turning into a squirrel that could blitz and bite through Stroheim's metal body. The armadillo shells he shot out turned into piranhas that could bite through a plane and octopus tentacles that could stop the propellers. He was fast enough to keep up with a plane flying at 240 km per hour, durable enough to survive being smashed into a volcano by said plane, and strong enough to punch himself through a side of a volcano while under lava. He doesn't need sleep, and can stay active for a year without drinking or eating. He no longer has any weakness, and can not only survive in direct sunlight, but can use Hamon itself, and at a strength hundreds of times stronger than that of Joseph to the point it liquefied and then vaporized Jojo's flesh on contact. The only way he could be dealt with was by having a volcano launch him into space, where he continued to live on, floating in the void, until he finally decided to stop thinking. Cars truly is the ultimate being. That's the end of the second part of my Jojo's Bizarre Adventure tier list series. If you haven't seen the first part yet, go back and watch that. If you haven't subscribed yet, make sure to hit that red button so you don't miss my descent into Jojo madness. I feel with each of these anime I watch, and each video I make, I stray further and further away from humanity, becoming more and more of a weeaboo. That's why I'll never forgive the Japanese!